This has been a long time coming for the DBA, I'll be honest with you. And this is only going to be the start of it tonight. I started up here naming and shaming. And I'm going to start from the very top tonight. And it's not going to finish tonight. It's going to go on going until we get that Royal Commission. So let's play. The principal, med the principal medical advisor of compensation at the Department of Veterans Affairs has personally called a psychiatrist to threaten his business unless he cuts what he recommends DBA paying wounded veterans in compensation. This doesn't happen in a vacuum. Five and a half thousand ADF members transition out of the ADF each year. Half of all transitioned ADF members have experienced a mental health condition in the last 12 months. 20 per cent of tw transitioned ADF members have considered suicide in the last year. 8 per cent have made a suicide plan in the last year. 2 per cent have attempted suicide in the last year. And about one a week will ultimately take their lives. And I'll tell you what, that's been DBA's statistics. I'd go more two and a half to three. In the middle of all that suffering, I've heard from a practising psychiatrist 35 years, 35 years in the job, that the DBA has pressured him to underestimate the mental health needs of his veteran, his veteran clients in his report to the departments. These reports are an important part of the veteran's compensation claims. A veteran with a needs assessment that is marked high will receive more financial support from the DBA than a veteran with lower scores. If a vet doesn't reach a certain needs threshold, they might, not, they might not get paid at all. This matters not just in determining the financial compensation support a veteran is entitled to receive, but also the support their children receive. This is a story of Dr John Cavillan, and he told me, and I quote, Dr John Cavillan is a psychiatrist who has received a phone call from Mr Fletcher Davies on Wednesday, February 5th at 4pm. Mr Davies wanted to know why Dr Cavillan had been marking reports highly. Mr Davies questioned why Dr Cavillan's assessments of veterans who had been referred to him for psychiatric assessment were being given higher grades of need than other psychiatrists were grading it. Dr Cavillan told Dr Davies he stands by the accuracy and truthfulness of all his reporting and that every veteran that he had interviewed had been in an especially emotional state. Dr Cavillan said that veterans are presenting to him were suffering from extreme anxiety, depression and some were clearly suicidal. Mr Davies told Dr Cavillan that if he continues to mark up his clients highly, DBA will refer the veterans' reports to another psychiatrist. Nothing new there. I'll say it again. Mr Davies told Dr Cavillan to compromise his professional judgment as to the needs of vulnerable veterans. He threatened Dr Cavillan financially using the buying power of the Department of Veterans Affairs. Fletcher Davies is a principal medical advisor for compensation all of three months in the job at the Department of Veterans Affairs. The principal medical advisor for compensation for the DVA is calling a psychiatrist and threatening him financially because he's supporting claims the DVA doesn't want to pay out for. Dr Cavillan said to Mr Davies, are you going to be the one who approaches the families to these veterans who are committing suicide and tell them that you're responsible for their suffering? And Fletcher Jones and Fletcher Davies, the principal medical advisor for the Department of Veterans Affairs, said to Dr Cavillan, we're not responsible for all of them. Oh, guess what, mate? Here's a wake-up call for you, Fletcher. I don't know what department you're working on or what planet you're on, mate. You are responsible for every single one of them. Every single one of them. DVA is supposed to be there to support our veterans. It's not there to strong-arm psychiatrists and other doctors into its making and to giving them, making them do a cheaper deal for our veterans. Senior officials in the DVA, DVA are not supposed to be bullying psychiatrists into lowering the compensation payments for suicidal veterans. And it's bullying, there's no doubt about it. It's threatening and it's, in, and it's financial intimidation. Well, I'll tell you what, Fletcher, if you want financial intimidation in bullying, you just took on the wrong girlfriend, mate. You took on the wrong girl. The standard process in that a GP refers the veteran to the psychiatrist, the psychiatrist does an initial report, then sends a letter to the GP and their advocate giving an overview. The advocate then sends a claim to the DVA. The DVA then sends a report back to the doctor for assessment of liability and claim. To be told that you are not going to be sent claims from the DVA is disastrous. That would mean that a veteran's treating psychiatrist who has been referred to by a GP, 
who has an existing relationship with that veteran isn't able to accept that veteran's claim, let alone write a report for it. The vet needs to go and tell a story to the new psychiatrist, picked, get this, picked by the Department of Veterans Affairs and told that they will show up. And if you don't want to show, and if you don't show up, then no doubt they'll stop your payments because you didn't comply with an order. That's how it works in the Department of Veterans Affairs. They need to rehash everything. They've been through it over and over and over again. They're sick of telling their stories because you want to rotate them from one psychiatrist to another until you get until you get the percentage that you want so you don't have to pay them out as much. This is just a shocker at its best. For a person who has experienced trauma, that is deliberately cruel, it is insensitive and is bloody heartless. You are deliberately inflicting harm on a veteran. 80, 90, 80 to 90 per cent of the patients that Dr Gavilan sees on a weekly basis are veterans. To no longer to be able to see them represent, represents a huge financial impact. Medical advisers, like the one who called Dr Gavilan, provide advice to delegates about how much compensation a vet should receive. They are essentially desk jockeys, and that is all you are, Fletcher, a desk jockey. They might be doctors, but there is almost no information about whether they are qualified to make determinations, let alone whether, Fletcher, you're, you're, you can determine what a psychiatrist should be making. I will tell you that now. It is not your department. The decision-making is inherently compromised. They are working for the same department that will have to pay the veteran's claim, but they are supposed to be providing an objective assessment about how much compensation a veteran needs. Yet the decisions they make can be incredibly consequential. They can overrule the findings of treating medical professionals. Isn't that disgusting? They get to determine how much veterans receive and whether they will get paid in a lump sum or instalments or at all. Somehow the DVA thinks that a person sitting at a desk looking through medical papers can make a better assessment of someone's need than their own bloody doctor. They're saying that a person at a desk is better qualified than a doctor who knows the veteran and has been treating them year in, year out. And now we find out that those medical advisors sitting at the desk, those, those medical desk jocks, are trying to keep costs down for the department. Oh, this is a brand new level for you guys. People who have served this country are killing themselves while the department shifts paper around, and they know it, they know it. They're cutting costs and it's cutting us, costing us lives. It's costing families. It's costing people who gave everything they had, everything they could to this bloody country. These bureaucrats might be removed from the effects of the decision making, but the impact is very real, I can assure you. They are pushing vulnerable veterans to the edge. It isn't just the trauma and the horrors of combat that lead these veterans to take their own lives. It's having to cope with all the trauma while they're forced to fight tooth and nail against the department that doesn't give a crap about them, let's be honest. We ask them to fight for us, and then they come back broken. They're broken into their service, and then they ask for help, and we go, buggy up, whatever costs us less. Don't take it from me. Take it from the families who have lost their loved ones. Jessie's Bird, Jessie Bird's mum and dad, writing to an inquiry into veteran suicide in 2007, said this, and I quote, Jessie has been endeavouring to seek assistance from the Department of Veterans Affairs for the last 18 months without success. It, sees, it seems to him and us that the level of bureaucracy is intentionally obstructionist and, un, and unedifying. The jungle of paperwork, the lack of follow-up and the non-existent support has contributed to his deteriorating mental health, just one of thousands. Jesse has not received any money whatsoever from the Department of Veterans Affairs or Centrelink to help him survive, and without any, our financial and emotional help, he would be on the streets or worse. Not long after that, in that submission, their son Jesse took his own life, alone in his own room. And guess what was next to him? His uniform, his service medals and his paperwork, his letter from the Department of Veterans Affairs rejecting his claim for assistance. He wanted that to be found. The letters rejected Jesse's claim for assistance because the Department of Veterans Affairs accepted conditions, PTSD, major depression, illness, alcohol abuse, and were not deemed permanent and stable at the time. He had $5.20 in his bank account. We now, and now we find out the department believes that they're not responsible for all veteran suicides. They're not responsible at all. Are you responsible for anything? I don't think so. You know what? I get really, really angry about this stuff. I call them out, but stories like this really, really break my heart. Absolutely. Here's a thought. It's not the psychiatrists who are treating these veterans that are the problem. It is the Department of Veterans Affairs. You are killing them. In the re inquest into Jesse Bird's death, Julianne Finney said the DVA claimed an independent review into suicide was not necessary. In 2019, the review found that the way DVA handles claims of veterans is potentially harmful to client mental health. So I have just one question for those DVA bureaucrats sitting up there pushing the goddamn paper making your decisions about our lives. 
making huge decisions about people's lives. How do you sleep at night? How do you sleep at night? And you deal with this in the morning. You deal with it.